So what, what we're going to talk to Ronnie about today is how long they've been here, because I know he has a lot of people say, well, I've been in South Haven for 10 years or 15 years. Well, how long has your family been here? Oh, we moved uh, We moved here in 61. We were the second house on State Line Road. Yeah. So I can remember when State Line stopped at 51 Highway. And like you said, we used to we used to play every, everywhere around 51 Highway to, to basically the interstate. Anything other than that was all playground for us. Yeah, so... Um, Let's get right into it. Sure. How's the city of South Haven doing? Oh, we're doing great. I mean, that's one thing we want to stress is, uh, I mean, the city's doing fine. We're we're running day to day just like we need to and hadn't slowed down. Well, the question is who's running the city because I know Greg Davis is not around right this minute. He's trying to get better. And Greg Guy had to step down because of his job at the um, – at the bank, you know, because you know, with the aldermen, they don't get paid quite as much, and, and they still all the aldermen still have full-time jobs. You have a couple. You have a signed company, and you work for the Memphis Fire Department. Right, right. So, I mean, everybody stays pretty busy. So let's say who is running the city. Let's say that something comes up. You join together as a board? We do. Um, I mean, just like always, we, we make most of the decisions as far as that goes, anything major. Uh, day-to-day operations goes through the uh, mayor's office. Uh, but uh, with him being gone right now, the CAO takes uh, takes care of that as well as the mayor pro tem. Uh, and I mean, we're day to day operations are great. Department heads in place are very competent, and, and they take care of their their departments, and everything's just running smooth. So it's it's running, and I serve on the board of my neighborhood. It's 350 people, so I know that I make a lot of decisions as president, and then my treasurer. He and I talk a lot, but whenever we have big issues like we have some repairs to do for our little pool. Now, I know we don't have a city, but we kind of have a little bitty city going on with a bunch of pools and lakes and walking trails and things like that. When we need to spend big money or raise dues, bring down dues, talk about anything like that, anything major, we bring the board in. And we don't have set meetings like South Haven does, but um, we just bring people together. And I'm assuming that's somewhat similar to what you're what you're talking about. You bring the board in. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's the same same principle. I mean, we meet twice a month on a uh, for our actual city meetings but uh it's the first and third tuesday of every month but uh as far as day-to-day operations we're in constant communication with each other we all work well together uh any decisions that need to be made we can we can get together and have our own opinions and decide what's best for the community well um i want to talk about that and one thing that I, that i like about south haven is it's so close to memphis so it's a it's it's like all our branch you know, suburb of Memphis so you know the schools are good we have to set a county schools I mean there's there's good things that we have what about the shopping I mean the shopping down there you remember when we grew up I mean there was Cowboy Corner on 51 and there was really nowhere to go shopping and I don't think we cared as long as we had our $15 you know Levi's from Burt's right we had our coupon we'd go into Memphis and do that in the movies (laughs) (laughs) well in the in the movies and everything you went in you went into Whitehaven and now we go there to eat a lot and um, you know there's still Italian Rebel, there's still Jack Pertle Chicken, things like that. Right. So. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, we've got, uh, so, I mean, we've got really yeah. anything you can need in South Haven. Are we getting an outlet mall? We are getting an outlet mall, yes. Where, where's that coming at? It's at 55 and Church Road Interchange. Have you seen the plans to it? I've seen some uh, preliminary plans. That's still some things that are in the works right now, but it is going to be uh, what they're classifying as a destination mall. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a lot of outdoor. It'll be an open outdoor area mall, and uh, it's going to be kind of modeled after the one in Nashville as well as the one down in Florida. So it's really going to be great. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. So the city's being run because you have good department heads and planning commission, and Chris Wilson is is what is his title down there? He's CAO. Yeah, he's he's been there a long time. And he, Has I think been. he does a really good job. Super job. And um, the water department, there's everybody's got their departments, the fire department, the police department. How long's Tom Long been there? Ooh, Tom Long's been, uh, I guess he's got to have at least 25-plus uh, years because yeah. he was there when I was with South Haven Dude still looks 30 years old. He man. really does. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> we ask him that all the time. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and then I know Vernon McCammon. I grew up next door to the McCammons, and Bill and I were really good friends. And um, even back in the volunteer days, I guess when South Haven was volunteer fire department. I remember that well. And we would just be riding around with Vernon and Miss Patricia, and, and all of a sudden the lights would go on and the sirens, and it's like, oh, <laughs> we get so excited. But, uh, yeah, so it's, it's grown, and, and some people don't see that whenever they watch the news. And, and there's some really important news that they're covering. I mean, we're not trying to act like there's not. 
but everybody's heard that, so I'm glad that Ronnie came in this morning. We actually have somebody with a question. We don't know what the question is, so you, let's go ahead and go to it. There's Jesse online with the question. What you got, Jesse? Alderman Hale. Yes. <coughs> I, I really believe South Haven is uh, in good shape. It's running well. But my, my concern was, and, and I know we're going to be safe, and it's a great place to live. It's going to continue to grow. But when we have a question now, we always used to call City Hall, and uh, the mayor would be there to ask a question. Who do we need to ask questions to if we need uh, something in our area done? Well, I would start with our aldermen. Uh, each one of the aldermen are very competent. We're, uh, we're concerned with what's going on in the city as well right now, but we know that uh, we're there for our constituents. We're, we're there to ask the questions. We're kind of the first layer of, of uh, protection, if you want to call it that, but we are the one that can give you most answers. If we don't know the answer then, we can, uh, we can get it for you. So uh, you more, than, more than glad to do that. So That's the quickest way to get your number, um, uh, if, you, if you're in my ward, what, where, and what, I need you. Would you um, rather than go to the internet? Let's. Can I call City Hall and get your number? Will they give your number out? Yes, they will. Mm -hmm. Hey, what? Uh, where do you live in South Haven? I'm in Ronnie's ward. Oh, okay, good, because that's real important. That uh, I know. Sometimes my parents live in Greenbrook. Well, not sometimes they've lived there for 30 years, but they, but their alderman has changed. It used to be Paul Aller, and then it changed, and I think now it. Then it was Brooks. Or it was going to be Brooks, and then it was um, George Payne. Yeah, so now I think it's George Payne. Right. So, yeah, that's the main thing to do. And, and, I mean, I would hope that there's a phone number for you posted on the website or given out fairly easily. I know there's also a email address. So yes, that, I mean. That, that change that Mr. Cates is talking about, when you, um, that, that is important, though. Isn't there some kind of redistricting coming up, and do you know when that will be approved? Uh, actually, we're waiting on uh, official approval now from the federal department. Uh, to redistrict to redistrict. South Haven. Right. With a census every 10 years, it's uh, mandatory. We redistrict and redraw the lines so we can uh, have equal repre representation across the city. So when do you think that would be available? Well, we're just kind of waiting oh. to hear from that any time now. Um, it, should, it should be coming out pretty soon. Uh, I've not heard an actual date. I'm going to look at uh, your notes, Ronnie. Look at my notes there and see what we've got. Uh, we have not heard an actual date, but uh, that is something we're checking into and uh, hoping to hear something pretty soon. Well, when you say equal representation, you're allowed to represent so many people each or try to keep it equal, how many people each? Do you know what that number is? How many people are you supposed to be? How do you, uh, how do you divide it up? He's asking, and Andy doesn't have his, his uh, headphones in right now, so he's asking me to re repeat your questions. So what you're saying is when does it get big enough that you split it up and divide it? Is that what you're kind of at? Is that what you're saying? No, no. I think if there's ten thousand in Ronnie's ward and three thousand in Miss Katie's, you would want to go ahead and make those about you know six thousand a piece or something. Is that correct, Ronnie? That's right. We try to try to make it as even uh, across the city as as we can. Um, we know there's going to be growth in different areas. That's the reason the census is done every ten years, and we try to follow those census lines yeah, according to state law. The city grows so fast. <clears throat> um, but like we're talking about in South Haven, now Miss Katie is over there by City Hall. She's in Ward 1. And you're over by Colonial Hills. Pretty much everything west of Highway but 51, right. Colonial Hills isn't growing quite as fast now as, say, southeast. We can say sure. southeast mm -hmm. South Haven. Southeast South so Haven. So I would imagine the population growth is going to be higher there, say, Goodman to Tullahoma all the way down to Getwell, and is, if it goes all the way to Star Landing now or college. Uh, down to college. Dickens Place. And now with the... Um, the economy getting a little bit better and a lot of homes being built and closed and sold. I mean, is it really fair to think that you should go with a certain amount of people? Everybody gets 6,000 people? It, it, I think it is, Ronnie. Don't you just keep being pushed east toward the population? That's right. That's where everything's huh. kind of growing now. I just uh, learned something. Thanks, yeah. Jesse. Um, actually, right now, our Ward 6 is uh, easily twice the size of some of our other wards, and that's... Uh, a little bit uh, unfair, if you want to call it, as far as representation goes. So that's why we, we change these lines around to make sure that everybody gets equal representation. Well, thank you. Good question. All right, man. Thanks for calling in, Jesse. Okay, let's take a break. We're going to come back and um, have, maybe take some more questions. The number's 901-260-5926. Thanks for calling in on the TJ Cates and Andy Demetrio Show. All right, we're back on the TJ and Andy Show. With Ronnie Hale. With Ronnie Hale, South Haven Alderman. 
Me? I we don't. should have had the Jesse uh, Jesse's Girl by Rick Springfield <laughs> song on a second ago for that for that Jesse guy because you know, he probably would have appreciated that. I bet when he was um, growing you to up, sing it? we've been wanting to do karaoke. Well, I bet together. when he was growing up, he sounded pretty old, and and I bet when he was growing up, he heard that song a lot. I bet he sang along with it. <laughs> probably so. <laughs> okay. Andy has a question. Yeah, right, Alderman, Andy. I have a question for you. Uh, sure. One of the things I keep hearing in the news, now I don't live in South Haven. I live in Bartlett, but I do keep up with that. I, I used to work in South Haven and have a lot of uh, attachment to the area. But I've, I've noticed that when, it, when this stuff came out, a lot of the, a lot of the conversation, at least in the, in the news, was South Haven doesn't have a mechanism to remove a public official from office. That's correct. And that seems like that, that would be kind of a big deal. I, you know, whenever you have the potential of having a corrupt politician or corrupt person holding a public office there needs to be a way to remove it we have that in the in the constitution of the united states in order to remove you know federal officials so you know my question is you know how come that's not that's not an option now granted i understand he hasn't been convicted of anything yet but why is that not an option that you guys have well that's that is one thing we checked into that was uh, something that most of our constituents have actually asked us about uh we try to we try to explain things as as good as we can and in this case they're uh, state law does not allow it. There is no mechanism in place at all that allows for removal or uh, a recall or anything along those lines of an elected official in the state of Mississippi. And there's no, and so since it's a state, basically state law won't allow for it, you guys can't create one of your own that's a South Haven. That's correct. We cannot uh, supersede any state, state laws or statutes. So and, and so, from what I've been hearing in the news, is that you just guys are trying to make it uncomfortable a little bit. Well, uh, I mean, we know we've got some areas to improve on, and we've already uh, found some areas that we've that we fixed. Uh, uh, we did just recently remove a uh, thirty-five thousand dollar stipend that uh, uh, he was getting that was determined to not be uh, quite legal, uh, and we did take action and remove that. Uh, we are looking into some other areas as far as uh, longevity and some e uh, college education benefits that we're not sure uh, as an elected official that he's that he's eligible for. Now, I also saw something on the news about a, a fire station. <laughs> Sorry, man. We're, laughing at something else. <laughs> we're having fun in here. Yeah, the behind the scenes. <laughs> if you go to our Facebook page later, the TJ and was it TJ and Andy? Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> Facebook.com slash TJ and a show. Is our, is our page good one uh the fire station deal yes that was uh <laughs> that's been that's been in the news as well and that's something we uh we just came to know about in the last uh, month or so and we realized we were in a 15-year lease uh, that was initiated by the mayor and this just wasn't a good deal for the citizens we we don't know how it slipped through the cracks as they say it was something that was started before the the previous administrations in place back in 08 and uh, it was a 15-year lease at 30,000 plus a month and that was not a good deal for the city in the beginning it was designed to uh, so we kind of did a lease purchase on that basically. well that's what we thought it was was a lease purchase but it ended up being a lease with an option to buy at the end it was really going to be uh, an expensive venture for the city if we had tried to stick it out the full 15. I went in there when they first built it. They're giving some tours, and I went. Up, I've got some friends that are firemen. I went over and looked at it. And you're a fireman with the city. I mean, wh how does it compare to one that's in the city of Memphis? Oh, it's a, uh, <laughs> it's not. There's not a comparison. I mean, South Haven's got some of the best uh, stations, the best equipment, the best manpower that anybody could ask for. I mean, that's uh, it's really a top-notch station. Uh, we've had some some concerns with what it looks like, but I mean, they're 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 not made to be a square building with Ten roofs anymore. Well, it needs to be functional. Well, yeah. well you we, know, Bartlett has lime green fire trucks. We kind of cool too. <laughs> well, that's. Do you uh, know why <laughs> fire trucks are lime green? I don't. Tell him, Ronnie. It's the visibility. They've they've determined that a lime green fire truck is. You know, maybe if you volunteered your time, well, to you know, a volunteer firefighter like I have, then you would know answers to that. We uh, we're we're going to stick to the traditional red with the white cab. It, it looks good. It looks better when it gets shined up. That's yeah. right. That's why that's why the street signs are green. You know, the green and the white have better visibility. I and didn't some know people didn't really get why they put the fire station there on Sweeney because there's not a huge population. It's the Get Well or Goodman, and uh, Greenbrook. But look at all those warehouses around there. When the tornado came through, what seven eight years ago, that you know that's right where they needed to be. Right. So there's a lot of industrial over there. And it has a lot to do reason? with uh, it. It has a lot to do with the location. Uh, 
accessibility in and out of the station during an emergency as well as that area was going to be a subdivision and at some point in time it will be and it has a lot a lot to do with your insurance rating there has to be a, a certain radius uh, with a fire station within it uh, so that keeps our insurance rating down as low as we can go. And the insurance rating also keeps homeowners insurance down. I'm That's correct. That. That's okay. correct. Man, I know more than I thought I yeah. did. That's right. You Not should run for office. No. <laughs> I get asked a lot, and I'd rather just have friends in politics. <laughs> it does not. I actually was going to run for um, supervisor and went ahead and qualified and everything a few years back. Oh. That yeah. was before it got crazy. Not crazy and all that. I'm just saying everybody and their brother runs. And I've got a lot of people in politics, and they said when the economy got bad, a lot of people started running for politics because of the retirement, because of the insurance, and it's basically like a corporate job. So it's hard to tell, you know, if somebody's doing that or they do it for the love of the country. So. Well, we hope uh, we hope the ones that run are really doing it for the right reasons. I mean, obviously, there's there's some that that, that enjoy it as the as the perks, like you said, but uh, um, that's not something that I, I I look to do. I mean. We all want to make an impact in our life, and this is one way we could do it. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> okay. Well, um, we have just a few more minutes. If anybody wants to call in, the number is 901-260-5926. Is there anything else you want to cover? When we come back, Ronnie, I think we have two more topics than your brother said. He's got a twin brother named named Donnie. Yay. And every time anything happens, we always blame it on Donnie. <laughs> and it makes me wish that I had a twin brother named <laughs> CJ. And now I think i got a switchboard operator, and, and maybe maybe this will be my, my uh, brother. I can blame everything. There on. you go. All right, we'll be back in a couple minutes on the TJ Cates, Andy, Ronnie Hill, and Ashley Kardashian. And CJ show. And CJ show. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. All right, thank you.